What is up guys, this is another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we go back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and review Raw and Nitro from 20 years ago. And so this week we're going back to December tw- or October 20th, 1997 and we're covering Raw 220 and Nitro 110. And uh, so we're of course going to start off with Raw and then move on to Nitro. And so we'll start off with Raw first. And so overall the show drew a 2.9 average rating. Um, so I did remember to look up the rating this week as I forgot to last week. But this show took place in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And to start off the show we had the Legion of Doom coming out. Of course, they're the new tag champs, as we found out from last week. And they come out and join with Ahmed Johnson and Ken Shamrock, followed by uh, Nation of Domination coming out. And so this is confusing at first because of all the people coming out. So I assume, you know, it's a four-way tag match and everything. And of course, um, the good guys come out first, followed by Nation of Domination. And as soon as everyone gets in the ring, they all just start fighting. So it's a huge um, fight all together with all all the people. Um, Of course, as it's going on, the crowd starts chanting, Rocky sucks. As they have been doing. And so they're just all fighting until everyone. Or most of the people get out of the ring. And then um, the match actually starts. Where we find out that it's actually Ahmed Johnson. And Ken Shamrock. Versus the Rock or Rocky. And Kama Mustafa of the Nation of Domination. So I guess the LODs out there. Just to help like in case. Um, Ahmed and Shamrock need help. From the other nation members. Um, but it, quickly as the match starts. Uh, DX comes out on the entrance ramp. And they set up some chairs. And sit down. And they start holding up some signs. And the, the signs are like attacking Vince. Or saying me things about Vince. There's sexual stuff. Like this is where they have the sign that says. Like I'd rather be in China. And uh, I forget what the other one is. And then there's um, also some that kind of seem like racial. And stuff of course with the nation of domination out there. But they start doing that. And so the match is going on. And Rick ends up walking down to the bottom of the ramp and just standing there and so it's like what's he you know gonna do or whatever well Farouk ends up walking of course Farouk's not in the match he's just standing on the outside he ends up walking over to Rick Rude and is just shown there like talking to him like whispering and stuff and so then we go back into the match and uh pretty much at the beginning Ken Shamrock is just dominating both the Rock and Kama and just um able to beat both them up but then they get the upper hand and um, when uh, Shamrock is going to bounce off the ropes and Kama ends up kicking him in the back while he's bouncing off the ropes because obviously he bounced towards the corner and that allows them to kind of get like the upper hand or whatever. Um, and once that happens, the LOD end up getting up on the apron because, you know, they see what's going on or whatever. And so that causes the ref to be distracted. And so the ref's over dealing with the Legion of Doom trying to keep them out of the match. And uh, Farouk ends up running in from behind while the ref's back is turned. And he has Rick Rude's briefcase. And he ends up hitting Ken Shamrock in the back with it. Or the head or just in the back or something. And so he goes down. Which then allows Rocky to get on top of him for the pin. And they end up getting the win for the nation. So the Rock gets the win there. And then so the match is ending. And I'm pretty sure some like stuff goes down with all the bunch of members fighting and everything. Um, and so it keeps showing you know, from the stuff in the ring to going up towards the ramp uh, showing the DX and stuff and this has a part where uh, Shawn Michaels stand up there and he ends up pulling his pants out or whatever like exposing his butt or moving mooning people or the crowd or whatever and Triple H puts a sign in front of his butt that has the X on it for DX and stuff and so that's kind of a um, famous picture or scene or whatever for the DX and so then they leave and the nation domination start walking out well Ahmed Johnson's mad and so he goes chasing up the ramp after the nation and um, starts a attacking them right at the very top of the ramp and so I don't know if he was supposed to do that but they um, start walking to the back and the LOD is slowly walking up the ramp after Ahmed and stuff and you know they're just taking their time and as they're like about halfway up the ramp or so the Godwins end up coming up from behind and attacking them taking them out with like trash cans and stuff just um, laying them out and so they leave that mess going on there then it goes to commentary table and um, just a funny thing they said here uh, Vince announces that there will um, I think he says tonight or yeah tonight that a former WCW champion will be in the ring tonight so kind of teasing you know how uh, WCW keeps getting all these WWF guys he teases that we have a WCW person and I don't know exactly who it was I mean I think I can figure it out because I'm pretty sure the person was a WCW champion I've assumed like a heavyweight champion or something but they did have a belt in WCW and so we will see that person coming up later 
But it immediately then goes to Michael Cole in the locker, um, back in the back in the locker rooms, and he's in the Nation of Domination locker room, and he's mentioning that uh, the Nation is mad and didn't want to talk, and they are coming out to the ring. But I want to show you why. And so it goes into their locker room, and the room is uh, completely destroyed. And there's been uh, like spray paint, spray or graffiti sprayed all over the wall. And it's a lot of uh, Canada related stuff. And so it's, you know, assuming that the Heart Foundation did it. There's a Canadian flag uh, leaning up against the wall. And then there's uh, some about stuff about Canadian references and stuff and then um some about a border and everything and showing around the room there's uh like I said the spray paint on the wall there's toilet paper thrown everywhere all around the room so it was like TP'd and then um as I said there was like chairs and benches and stuff that were destroying everything so again showing like a huge attack there on the locker room and so with that we then get Farouk walking out uh, to commentary and he's there to conf confront Vince and stuff and he's questioning about racism and saying that he knew there was um, racist in the WWF and stuff and he asks Vince um, are you a racist and stuff and Vince replies with you know I'm not so it's just kind of weird going on stuff like this today would not be happening it'd be fitting for today but it would not be happening and so from there Fruk grabs a mic and goes into the ring for a promo and at this um, about this time the rest of the nation is out there with him and he starts cutting a promo about racism in America and like really going into some deep dark stuff about racism in America and everything and while he's doing that the Hart Foundation ends up coming out or he challenged the Hart Foundation to a, a match right then and there or to a fight I should say and the Hart Foundation ends up replying and they slowly start coming out one by one it's like they weren't prepared or something because they come out and like they're putting on their jackets as they're walking out and so it's just kind of weird with the like what seemingly unpreparedness they are at this time. And so that immediately we go into a match. I don't know if it was supposed to happen or not, but it does. But it's a match between Farouk and Bret Hart. So the two groups coming together. And so as the match is starting out, the D um, DX ends up coming out to commentary. And uh, Sean gets on the microphone or whatever talking and he starts uh, making his case for why he should be the champion because as shown by this that he's not a racist again referencing that it was Brett and the Hart Foundation that did all that and you know that Brett's a racist and so that he should that Sean should be the champion because he's not. And so in the match, it's pretty much just a brawling match, obviously, with stuff as racism thrown in. You're just going to have a bunch of fighting. Nothing real technical going on there. Uh, but during the match, Brett ends up turning around after he, like, took out Farouk or something and notices that Sean is on the commentary table. And so he starts going out for him. And as soon as he, like, gets out of the ring, the nation, some of the nation members grab a hold of him and start holding him back away from DX. And then because of that, the rest of the Heart Foundation comes around and starts fighting with the nation. And so then all hell breaks loose between the two teams. And as this is going on, DX is able to slip out and leave. And then it goes to a commercial break and we come back and the match is back in the ring continuing on. Uh, Brett starts attacking Farouk's leg you know, to, and, uh, to set him up for either the sharpshooter or what he ends up doing, which is uh, bringing him over to the figure four around the ring post that he's been doing. And so he's setting him up for that. And as soon as uh, he's like pulls Farouk in and the start wrapping, starting to wrap his legs up in the like fi number four like figure. That's why it's called figure four. Um, the nation dominations come over and start attacking Brett to stop him from doing that. And so as they're doing that again, all hell breaks loose. And so it's just a huge mess going on there. And so while they're doing that, the refs obviously accounting. And Farouk starts celebrating in the ring thinking that he possibly won. I don't know if he did or not. Nothing was ever mentioned or anything. But like he got a count out on Brett. And uh, so as he's in the ring kind of like celebrating stuff that he won. Stone Cold ends up running in from the crowd. And uh, hits a stunner on Farouk. And then runs back out through the crowd. And Brett's heart at this point is able to get into the ring. And he's kind of like looking around like what's going on. Because I don't know if he noticed Stone Cold or not. But uh I know he's like looking around and everything, but he doesn't see Stone Cold around anywhere or anything. And so he gets on top of Farouk and gets the pin on him. Then next up we have um, the person that I was talking about. Uh, Jeff Jarrett ends up coming out to the ring and cutting a promo. Or, can't remember. No, I think he does go right to the ring. So I don't remember if he goes over to commentary and says stuff to Vince first or not. He may have, but I don't really remember. It's not like it matters. Um, but I assume he's the WCW champion that uh, Vince was talking about. But by uh, 
what is mentioned and stuff, I don't think Vince was like expecting him to come out at this point because he says some something about a uh, couldn't wait or but some about like I know you wanted to have a big formal introduction or something like that, but he goes I can't hold it any longer or something. And so he just comes out and starts talking about WCW and WWF and stuff. And so he starts off by talking about how he didn't re-sign with WCW and because Eric Bischoff had buried him and that he was being held back because he wasn't one of Eric Bischoff's boys and so pretty much like the people from the NWO and stuff and a part of Hogan, Nash, and Hall and everything and so with them all there and stuff he wasn't getting anywhere and being held back as he said so he decided to move on from there back to the WWF. Um, he says while in WCW he had been uh, paired up with a football player that couldn't wrestle. He obviously said more like detailed stuff than that, but the gist was that he couldn't wrestle, and that and his dumb blonde of a wife or his wife, or whatever, that gave a new meaning to dumb blonde or something along those lines. So again, referencing Steve Mongo McMichaels and Deborah McMichaels, and then he starts talking about WWF, how he had um, left two years ago because of being held back. Um, by Vince and the WWF and he mentions how stupid the country singer gimmick was that he was doing um, that Vince had gave him so pretty much saying it was all Vince fault and while he was here at that time he had to fight you know people like a clown a drunk man which I don't know exactly who is referencing as a drunk man if it was like Jake the Snake or something like that and then a black guy that can't speak English I don't know if at that point it was uh, Ahmet Johnson or Farouk I don't know for sure what he was talking about but kind of being pretty somewhat racist there or something I would say um but then continue on saying that uh, Vince buried him because he couldn't beat out his dad so Jerry Jarrett um since Vince couldn't put his dad out of business Vince used Jeff Jarrett to like bury him and stuff to like get back at his dad and that Vince tonight he's this is where he mentioned you know that I know you want to become out here and uh, have formal introduction and all this stuff but he Vince told him to come out here and shoot and so that's what he's doing so it's the first time we get like a reference to, like shoot which is like telling the truth in the wrestling business and not being kayfabe or lying and stuff and so that's what he's out there doing is just shooting and uh he tells looks at Vince of course talking to Vince at this time and stuff and he says that uh, Vince can take with my baby tonight and shove it up his butt and then from there he starts moves on to start calling out uh Brett Sean and Stone Cold, you know, saying he can beat all of them in matches. And then he ends up, lastly, with Stone Cold saying that Austin 316 offends him and is blasphemy. So Jeff Jarrett's kind of airing all his grievances right there with the WWF and WCW and stuff. But from there, we move on to the next match of Brian Christopher, who comes out with Jerry Lawler. And he's taking on Mark Mara, of course, coming out with Sable. The thing is with Lawler, he does end up going over and sitting at the commentary table during the match and so this is when he starts on commentary for the night but i don't know why he, he had to come out with all brian christopher i mean obviously it's his son but you'd think if he comes out with him he'd be in his corner and stuff but as the match is going on uh lawler just starts talking something about showing vince how you sell product or merchandise and stuff and so he goes over to sable with um one of his new uh stone cold's new hats and he puts it on her to have her like showed around stuff. And he comes back and he says, are there now you will sell millions of them or something like that. So she, using Sable as like a, I forget what they call them, but just kind of like, you know, to show off the hat and get people to buy it and stuff because she's wearing it and everything. Um, but of course, back in the match, uh, Mark Marrow then notices that Sable's wearing the hat and of course gets mad and gets out of the ring and goes up to her and is yelling at her and stuff and then takes the hat and throws it all into the crowd, which then when he gets back and allow, allows Brian Christopher, they get the upper hand. But of Mark Mara is easily um, able to get it back again and ends up hitting a low blow on Brian Christopher followed then up by his TKO move and then gets the win off of that. Then from there we go into hour two and the show or this part kicks off with Owen Hart taking on Shawn Michaels and this is what they're calling a title for title match. Now I, I you'll see obviously or hear obviously what happens but I assume I was like I don't remember this happening in one person holding both titles. So I was like obviously I feel there's gonna be you know a, like a non-true finish or something going on here. But so as the DX is coming out uh, Rick Rude is having like trying to do like an introduction of Shawn Michaels so it's all on but Shawn. And Rick Rude has the mic and he's trying to do an introduction on Shawn but he's having troubles with the microphone and it's not working or whatever. But he eventually gets the microphone working and he's in, able to introduce Sean. And as uh, Owen Hart mentions that, uh, you know, they want to fight man to man. So to leave DX or the rest of DX at the back and he'll have the Hart Foundation stay at the back. And so it'll just be man versus man. And so Sean agrees or whatever. So it's just both of them with no other members of their team. Uh, so in the match, not a whole lot goes on. It's not a horrible match. You know, with these two, it's pretty decent, but there's just nothing big or major that goes on throughout the match. Um, at one point, Sean might... 
ends up hitting the pile driver onto Owen and they're on the outside of the ring so it's hitting it on the ground. I mean obviously there's the padding they didn't pull that up or anything but he does hit it on the outside so that's kind of devastating I'd assume. And then back inside the ring Sean ends up going for the sweet chin music but Owen's able to duck it and then he uh is so then gets the upper hand or whatever from that and Owen is able to hit the Pele kick onto Shawn Michaels on the back of the head and before he can go for the pin or anything Stone Cold comes running in from the crowd and he's the ref's like trying to stop him in front of him and stuff and so uh, Stone Cold ends up stunning the referee and then just runs out or whatever and so it takes the um, ref out and with that distraction by Owen because Owen obviously notices and like was watching him the whole time Sean when he turns around Sean ends up hitting him with the sweet chin music and goes down for the pin but there's no ref to count the pin and as he's doing that uh, Bret Hart ends up running from the back because it keeps showing the Hart Foundation watching the TV in the back and it shows him leave the TV and running through the back and he runs out and starts attacking Shawn Michaels and then that causes all of DX to come running out and they end up uh, pulling Shawn out of the ring while Bret is still like beating him and stuff and the Foundation ends up following out then too to help but obviously DX is just getting out of there and because of that the match is a DQ obviously since Stone Cold attacked the ref and everything they don't that's a DQ and everything then next up we get Undertaker in the back and like a pre-done thing promo on Kane and he's talking about how uh when he looked and it was Kane's eyes or whatever that he saw his brother but it was lies that had been poisoned saying that Paul Bearer had poisoned Kane's mind and stuff and told him lies and everything and that he will not fight his own flesh and blood so it's famous saying that he puts on with Kane that he won't fight Kane and stuff because it's his own brother and flesh and blood and stuff you know showing that they're from the same parents and everything and so um that ends that promo then next up we go to a match that's supposed to be do love versus British Bulldog but do love comes out first and then waiting for British Bulldog but Kane ends up coming out instead and so as Kane hits the ring do love just starts fighting against him and is just doing all he can to like attack him and he ends up knocking Kane out over the top rope so he's getting you know some offense compared to other people Kane's been in the ring with and stuff and as they're outside on the ground do love ends up going on reaching out of the ring and pulling out a steel chair and ends up hitting Kane in the head with it and Kane just kind of like sh shakes it off or whatever he shows a little effect like you think he like stumbles a little step wise but it's not much and then and he's just right back at it and he grabs a hold of do love and choke slams him twice on the ramp taking him out and ending that segment then next up from there we get a match of the headbangers taking on the newly formed new age outlaws and so of course this is their first appearance as a team at least on raw and stuff we saw that preview or thing from saturday night's main event or whatever from a week or so i can't remember if it was last week or the week before but it was from the past uh, uh shotgun saturday night and it showed billy gunn choosing to go with road dog or whatever and form a new team so this is their first thing and of course coming out road dog does their entrance um it's pretty similar to their classic one of oh you didn't know you you guys better call somebody and all that sort of stuff but it's like a longer version and stuff so they haven't you know got the thing they say all the time yet um but in the match uh not much is going going on wise with the match and stuff it's just like you know a match between two people it's not that good but uh billy gunn ends up at one point going out and grabbing a hold of a boom box that i assume the headbangers came out with i didn't notice it but he pulls up a boom box from their um side of the ring and ends up smashing it on thrasher's head which that takes thrasher out and he um, you know goes down or whatever and road dogs able to get on top of him and get the pin on him and so that gives the new age outlaws the win and then the outlaws go over to vince and or the commentary and start yelling at vince and then they even throw uh, start yelling at lawler about not getting a chance in the company and they're threatening them to like kick their butts and stuff and they mention lawler because they're like yeah i worked for you too and you didn't pay me and or give me a chance and all this stuff talking about the memphis territory and everything so that was uh kind of interesting then next up we get a match of tajiri versus taka michinoku so this is a light heavyweight match and so sunny comes out to do the introduction for these matches as i um remember her doing um but before the right before the match starts and stuff they play like a little video clip or something of taka uh, signing with the wwf and how he's the hottest free agent light heavyweight and uh so i guess it was kind of a big deal because there was like a whole press conference type thing that they were showing but into the match they kind of hit a lot of cool moves um Tajiri kind of dominates most of the match and so at one point he ends up hitting a springboard moonsault onto Taka who's out on the floor 
floor, so that was kind of interesting. And then Taka later ends up kind of like doing his version, but he ends up doing a springboard cross body onto Tajiri. So he does a lot of cross bodies, and so they're not that interesting compared to like a moonsault or anything. Um, but inside the ring, Taka goes up to the top rope and does a moonsault, but Tajiri ends up rolling out of the way, so Taka misses. Tajiri ends up hitting the Hurricane Rana on Taka, but Taka is able to kick out of it. So that just kind of remind me of uh, WCW with uh, Rey Mysterio. He's doing the Hurricane Run and stuff as his like finisher. But to end the match off, Taka ends up hitting the Michinoku driver and getting the pin. So of course Taka is going to become the first light heavyweight champion and the like star of the light heavyweight division and stuff. So that's why he gets the win there. And from there we go into another Jim Cornette Ray. And he this week he's kind of um, just responding to the um, Phil Mu- yeah Phil Mushnick stuff from last week. Of course the guy from the TV Guide and some other journalism paper who's writing about the horrible stuff or whatever with wrestling and the stupid fans and all that. Um, so he reads messages that were sent into. Phil Mushnick that I don't know where they got him if they were sent to WWF or if they were sent to Phil Mushnick and he posted responses um but there he's just reading multiple responses from fans that they were insulted and of different ages and just all sorts of different um, responses and uh that uh Phil Mushnick ended up responding by calling all the fans knuck- the knuckleheads and that they're exactly what he thought they were and everything and so it just goes on with that nothing much more to it and from there we get our main event for the night which is the Godwins versus the DOA or two members of the DOA and so right before the match starts we get a replay of the Legion of Doom winning the titles from last week and the Godwins um losing the match and attacking Uncle Cletus and all that sort of stuff but as soon as the match starts they um the Godwins started attacking the referee Mike Kyoto because he um, ended up running in and had counting the pin after the Godwins had t- did the slop drop on the actual referee of the match last week so they kind of took it out on him and so the uh, DOA members end up coming out then and so they are double teaming on the Godwins so it's obvious- obviously there's four DOA members compared to the two Godwins and so they're double teaming up on them and with the response to that or whatever the truth commission ends up running out to help the Godwins and so that makes it six against four and so so they're the Godwins and Truth Commission are obviously able to get the upper hand and stuff and the interrogator of course is in the ring or Kurgan and he just starts flipping out and attacking all the guys and refs and officials come in and stuff trying to split it up and he's attacking them and everything so he's just going crazy and while that's all going on it cuts to the back room or whatever and it's showing mankind sitting on the floor with a bunch of like pipes and everything around him so he's in like the bowels of the building or whatever and he ends up challenging Kane to a match and so th- Obviously, instead of it being as dude love, he's going to be as mankind this time so he can actually, you know, do somewhat decent or whatever against Kane and stuff. So that's going to be set up for at some point in the future. And so that was it for Raw 220 this week. And so then now we will move on to Nitro, which, by the way, I thought that Raw was pretty good and decent. A lot of big stuff happened. Like within the first 30 minutes, I already had a, like a whole page of notes and stuff with all the um, stuff with DX and the Nation Domination and Heart Foundation and stuff. Um, so that was uh, pretty pretty good and interesting but now we'll move on to nitro 110 again this is from october 20th 1997 and this nitro got an average of 4.6 rating so almost a little over two can't even talk now um almost two points higher and this took place in biloxi mississippi and so the show started out immediately with um showing in the back nwo members were laying on the ground and they were starting to get up and showing like they were being knocked out had been knocked out or whatever and this is all the pretty much nwo b team all but the big top people or whatever the a team and stuff and so as they're getting up the a team and comes running in so it's pretty much hogan macho man eric bischoff and maybe scott hall i don't remember exactly but they run in and start helping the other members up and stuff and and as they're doing it, you can uh, notice that there's Sting's bat laying on the floor. There's a shirt of that Roddy Piper's been wearing. It's like the icon shirt. And then there's a DDP. So the letters DDP spray painted on the floor. So it's kind of signifying, I guess, who did it. And so um, that, of course, pisses people off. And so Hogan, Bischoff, and Macho Man come out to the ring to cut a promo. And so they call um, Piper, Sting, and DDP out to a fight right now. And, you know, obviously go on with more details 
detail stuff. But then uh, they end up motioning and uh, noting that there's a ring hanging above the cage or above a cage hanging above the ring. Of course, with Hogan and Piper's match coming up, that's kind of what that's there for. But they kind of use that as like a threat or something like that or that they could do it now. And they end up leaving and it goes over to commentary. And so commentary is mentioning that this is WCW finally fighting back. And then they replay, replay the events that happened last week with all the different stings coming in and fighting the NWO and that they they said like most people didn't notice but Sting ended up pulling the WCW title out from under his coat and handing it to Piper and so that's how Piper had it last week when he started swinging around to fight off the NWO and stuff so he had given it to Sting and so that's what they meant by it's in a safe place and all that sort of stuff and from there we go into our first match of the night which is Chris Benoit taking on Eddie Guerrero and of course Eddie's the cruiserweight champion at this point and so obviously with these people or with these two I should say it's a really good match because both these guys are really good um but of course as soon as the match starts there's a big eddie sucks chance and then it keeps popping up every now and then as the match goes on but as i mentioned this uh with these two the match is very fast paced and it's really good throughout the match benwell keeps hitting eddie in the chest with a bunch of uh like chops so like the knife edge chops or whatever you call them and so it's really loud the way he's doing it and edgy eddie's chest starts to turn like a bright red and so they look painful and sound painful and then with the redness you can tell they hurt but at one point Chris Benoit ends up doing a suicide dive to the outside so that's kind of a more modern thing that you see obviously it's not anything new but it's done a lot now the, the now these days and this was something that you'd see every now and then um at one point uh eddie ends up tripping chris benoit comes running at him obviously and uh chris benoit ends up hitting his head on the second turnbuckle which kind of takes him out like knocks him out or whatever supposedly and so that allows eddie to go up to the top rope and hit the frog splash off onto him and then gets the pin on him so eddie retains the title out of that match and then from there we go into a replay of um the u.s title match from last week so the ending of it so the um kurt henning and ddp match where rick flair ended up running out right at the three count attacking kurt henning and so you know since the ref hit three piper thought or page thought he won but the ref ends up uh saying he didn't or whatever because of rick flair getting in and so page didn't end up winning the title and kurt henning gets to keep it and from there we go into our next match which is another goldberg match and he's taking on wrath who's coming out with james vandenberg and mortis and so this is more of the goldberg matches that i remember it's a very much a squash match and so as soon as the bell pretty much starts goldberg hits a spear mainly and the jackhammer for the pin and i mean this was even so fast you know wrath still had all his gear entrance gear on and with him and they wear a lot of interest gear with like a whole like jacket or coat type thing or cape and a mask and all that stuff and so he still had all that on and so Goldberg gets the win there leading to his next win and they didn't mention a number or anything and so I don't know if he obviously had any other matches between um, last week and stuff so I don't know what the number would be now but um, of course Goldberg's walking up the aisle way and uh, the whole time he's walking up he's asking who's next so it's the first time you get his who's next tagline and as he gets to the top of the ramp Steve Bong Mike Michaels is walking down the ramp for his match next and they kind of get in the face of each other and stuff and so then as I mentioned that leads into our next match which is Steve McMichaels taking on Mortis now and so as the match starts out it looks like it's just trying to be a re that Steve's uh or McMichaels whatever is trying to do a repeat of the Goldberg match and so as soon as the bell rings Mongo goes for a tackle but he attacks the knee of Mortis and so he hits ends up hitting it twice and then hits some other move I can't remember what it was and then ends up going for the pin but as he's doing that James Vandenberg ends up getting up on the apron and causes a distraction from the pin and then of course commentary the whole time this match is continuing on uh they're questioning uh of who Deborah McMichaels will end up bringing out or having as her person in the Halloween Havoc match against Steve McMichaels. Um, then at one point during the match, uh, James Vanderberg gets up on the apron again or whatever and is distracting the ref. And so then Mortis sends uh, Steve Mongo McMichaels out side of the ring or throws him outside the ring whatever and so then mortis is now dealing with the referee and james vandenberg goes over and ends up kicking mongo in the chest and as he gets back up to get into the as mongo gets back up into the ring mortis ends up hitting a soup or suplexing him off the apron into the ring so from the outside to the inside but soon mongo's able to get the upper hand again and he goes for the tombstone 
but Vandenberg again causes a distraction and Mongo's this time is able to get his hands on Vandenberg and starts attacking him and taking him out and then he turns back around and gets Mortis up into the tombstone and hits it on him and gets the pinfall and then so wins the match or whatever. And so immediately find that Mean Gene comes out to interview Steve Mongo McMichaels and he's talking about that he doesn't care who his opponent's going to be at Halloween Havoc and while he's talking about this Deborah McMichaels ends up walking out and she comes out and interrupts or whatever and that she still and she's mentioned that she still won't tell who the opponent is and so it'll just be a surprise and as he's walking up out of the rampway or whatever away from the thing because this was out by ringside he walks by and Stevie Richards is standing in the aisleway with a sign or whatever and Mongo ends up taking it from him and hitting Stevie Richards with it and so I don't know what that was all about or what the sign said. I couldn't read it or anything. But I just thought it was weird that he did that attacking him. But fittingly that leads into our next part which um, is a video of Raven again. And this time he's at some playground and he's just reflecting on his childhood. And at one point he starts doing like a quote thing and it's the landslide song by Stevie Nicks. And then of course ends it with quote the Raven nevermore. Um, then from there we go into another Mike Tenay report on Luchadors. And this time it's all a feature on Rey Mysterio Jr. And they talk about uh so it's just showing more about ray's history growing up or whatever and again showing his uncle and stuff um but then ends up to, uh, at the end saying you know that the mask is on the line at halloween havoc against eddie Guerrero, and so it obviously it mentioned about a uh, luchador mask and how you know it's put on the line a lot or whatever in the business so that's one thing they do a lot and then from there it goes into our next match of juventud guerrero versus yuji nagata of course coming out with sunny odo and commentary ends up mentioning that nagata has been a hired assassin by sunny Ono to take out Ultimo Dragon and the other luchadors and stuff. Or as the match is going on, we end up showing Raven and three other people walking down the stairs, um, you know, obviously in the crowd and stuff to get to seats. But back in the match, at one point, Hoovitude ends up going up to the top rope to do a move, but Sunny Ono gets up on the apron and ends up kicking Hoovitude's leg out, and so Hoovy gets crotched on the top rope. Then Ultimo Dragon comes out and starts going after Sunny and is like chasing him around the ring and everything. And Yuji Nagata ends up putting the Nagata lock as they call it on Juventude for the getting the or gets the win off of that and I believe it's just a reverse um, figure four is what they call it but Ultimo Dragon is finally able to catch Eugene Ch to catch Sunny Oh no. And by the time he gets his hands on Sunny, Nagata ends up coming out and attacking Ultimo Dragon, saving Sunny Ono. And then Sunny and Nagata end up beating up Ultimo Dragon. Then next up we get another match and it's Viano 4 and 5 and Damien coming down to the ring. So I'm like, oh, this must be like a six person match or whatever. But the Giant ends up coming out after that. And so it's going to be a squatch net match as um, you're going to guess. But um, I believe Comtray mentioned that Giant's not supposed to be coming out here, but he does anyway. But he comes out to the ring and starts cutting a promo and he's calling out Kevin Nash um and as he's doing that Damien comes up and starts interrupting him like saying like what are you doing and stuff and the giant ends up attacking him and they takes out all of the luchadors there so Damien and both Vianos and he ends it off by hitting a powerbomb so referencing Kevin Nash whatever and he ends up hitting the powerbomb on one of the Vianos then that goes into Nitro Girls who come out and dance in the ring and while they're doing that um commentary reads up or plays a Nitro Party ad so again, trying to get people to do that Nitro Party stuff. And then from there, it goes into a next match of Disco Inferno, who's the TV champ, and he's taking on Rey Mysterio Jr. And of course, with the two sizes, um, Disco's using power moves, and Rey is using speed and agility to beat Disco. At one point, Rey ends up going for a springboard Hurricane Rana, but as he's going up to do it, like as soon as he like bounces on the rope or whatever, Eddie like ends up hitting him and pulling Rey Mysterio off the ropes and taking him out. And again, he's still trying to pull Rey's mask off him, though. He can just wait for the match at Halloween Havoc and try and get it off Ray there but he's doing it now and then Ray or Miss Jackie ends up running out and then Miss Jackie or Jackie ends up running out and starts going after Disco and ends up chasing him to the back trying to get after him for their match at Halloween Havoc. From there we go into hour two and it kicks off with Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, and Macho Man coming out once again to the ring and they're talking about how they want to get their hands on Piper, DDP, and Sting and uh, Hogan saying that this the way he feels right now he'll fight everybody even at all the fans in the arena and that they they're going to be shutting down the building until they those three guys come out to face them but no one ends up coming out and the NWO ends up leaving so they're kind of not pushing too hard for this since they just keep leaving the ring but from there we go to our next match which is Dean Malenko taking on Kurt Henning who of course is the US champion but this match you'd think with these two would be really good but it's just a real slow match and nothing really 
major happens. Dean ends up attacking the Kurt Henning's leg at one point, and then he eventually is able to get the Texas Cloverleaf on to Kurt Henning, but Kurt's close to the rope, so he ends up grabbing a hold, breaking the submission. But Kurt is finally able to get the Fisherman Suplex off and get the win. And then from there, we go to another Nitro Girls dancing, and this time they're on the ramp. And that leads into our next match of Ray Trailer taking on Scott Norton, who comes out with Vincent. Um, as soon as the match starts, Ray starts attacking Norton and Vincent and keeps fighting with both of them or whatever as the match starts out. At one point, Ray Trailer ends up hitting a cross body off the top rope onto Vincent. At one point, Ray goes up to the top rope and to hit a cross body onto Norton, but Vincent is able to get up on the apron for a distraction, keeping from the pin. And because of that, Ray ends up going after Vincent to, you know, tag him or whatever, beat him up. And he ends up spraying Ray Trailer in the face with the spray paint. So, of course, you know, getting spray paint in your face is not fun. But I'm pretty sure it was fake because it didn't look like he had black paint on his face or anything. And so Scott Norton and Vincent start celebrating everything and Ray ends up attacking them both from behind. Which caused for Conan, Kurt Henning, and Scott Hall to come running out to join in. And they all beat up on Ray Trailer to try and take him out. Then next and from there we get a match between Booker T who's coming out with Jackie. And he's going. they're going against Lex Luger. He's going against. Um, so as the match starts there's a very loud Luger chance um, for the beginning of the match. Or at the beginning of the match match and stuff so showing you how popular Lex Luger is. At one point Booker T ends up hitting the Harlem sidekick and then the scissor kick or following up with the scissor kick but Luger ends up kicking out of that so that's Booker T's like finishing setup or whatever or finishing setup and move but Luger just kicks out. Um, then at one point Luger starts hitting a bunch of clotheslines and then hits the bionic forearm and starts to go for the torture rack but Booker T is able to counter out of it but in the end Luger ends up getting Booker T up for the torture rack anyway and Booker gives up giving the win to Luger. And immediately following that, Mean Gene comes out to the ring to interview Lex Luger. And Luger like starts off by complimenting Booker T, saying you know that he's a really good talent or whatever and stuff. So kind of showing why they're starting to do more stuff with Booker T. Um, but then he starts saying that uh, Scott Hall will pay at Halloween Havoc. And just going on about Scott Hall and stuff, well, Larry Zabisco starts walking out to the ring. And Zabisco clarifies, you know, with him being the ref at the or in the match, he clarifies that he will call the match down the middle. And that he will count if Hall's shoulders are on the are on the mat or whether Luger's are. He's not going to play favorites in that. And from there we go into an NWO commercial for Six's shirt. So that's one of their black and white commercials and stuff. And that leads into a Nitro Girls dancing on the ramp. Followed up by a match of Scott Hall taking on Scott Steiner. And Scott's coming out with or Scott Steiner is coming out with Ted DiBiase. Um, again, as Scott Hall comes out, he does a survey of the crowd, and um, actually at this place, there's more people cheering for WCW, and there's cheers and boos for the NWO, so WCW obviously wins. And he mentions that uh, Kevin Nash will take care of the Giant when he returns, so when Kevin Nash is back from injury, and that if Larry Zabisco isn't a partial referee, that he will have to answer to Scott Hall, so Scott's like threatening him or whatever. So then Scott... Uh, Scott Steiner ends up coming out and stuff and so as they're in the ring get ready to start Scott Hall takes the toothpick and throws it in Steiner's face and then Scott Steiner does the arm signal thing with the up yours so like the fist going up in the air type thing or whatever to Scott Hall so that obviously adds some anger to the match or whatever. At one point when Scott Hall's on the outside Ted DiBiase comes up and hits uh, Scott Hall um, while the ref is backing up Scott Steiner from going out after Hall, so the ref's distracted technically, and De Ted DiBiase ends up coming up and hitting Hall. And then back inside the ring, Scott Hall goes to for a choke slam and or hits a choke slam, and then puts his hand up in there doing the whole thing that the Giant does, so kind of um, signifying to him or whatever. Um, throughout the match, as Scott Hall's do, uh, doing like moves and pins and everything, he keeps using the ropes, and the ref notices and stuff whatever. But Scott Hall's you know cheating pretty much to win. And then at one point, Scott Hall ends up hitting the ref, trying to, or knocking him out and, you know, trying to get a win or loss, whatever, by DQ. So he doesn't have to do the match anymore, but um, that's not going to work or whatever. And so Scott Steiner gets his hand on him and ends up doing a double unhook powerbomb and then goes for a cover, but obviously the ref is not out there or not up or whatever, so there's no on the count. And then as they start fighting again, it's able to get reversed, and so Scott Hall gets the upper hand and he starts to get uh, Scott Steiner up for the outsider edge but he's doing he of course is like struggling to get Scott Steiner up because he's so big up into it but he finally does hits it and get the cut gets the cover or gets the pin or whatever on it and then some mass referee ends up running out counts the three and I assume it's Vincent 
Um, by the way, the guy looked, I assume it would be Vincent, but he's in a ref outfit and has the mask on and stuff, so you can't really tell, but I'm pretty sure that's who that was. But I did want to say, I did make a note that um, while this match was going on, I noticed that in the crowd there was um, people on, like, the the way this thing was set up, there was, like, a like a wall, almost, of, like, a separating, like, different areas or sections in the building. But on that wall, the people that were sitting there had uh, signs on it that said Nitro and stuff on it. I noticed as the night went on, more and more of the letters started disappear, so it started, you know, at the end. And so I think by the time this match, it was just N-I was all that was left. So I just thought that was funny. But then we go into our last segment of the night, and so um, Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, and Macho Man end up coming out for the last time tonight so as they get in the ring or whatever um hogan they may make mention or do whatever stuff about hogan's movie being on tnt next week so it's the assault on devil's island which i've never heard of um but so they go out and get the posters of it and stuff and just make mention that it's going to be on next week and then they start talking about the matches or halloween havoc and stuff saying that they're really going to hurt the guys and then we end up getting a fake sting coming out onto the entrance ramp and so while while he's like walking down the ramp wherever towards the ring somewhat a fake sting ends up or two fake stings end up coming out of the crowd and getting in the ring and start attacking Hogan and Macho Man and when they get them knocked down or whatever and stuff they pull the mask off and it's Piper and DDP and so the NWO comes running out to take out the sting that's coming down the entrance ramp and so they start fighting with him and they all start heading towards the ring to take out DDP and Piper and stuff and as they're doing that the cage from the ceiling is starting to lower down around the ring and as it's going down sting comes down with it like repelling down and so he's in the real sting this time so he's inside of the cage now too and this cage is different it's not like a normal cage like a cage that just goes around the ring whatever it's pretty much a hell in a cell cage but there's no top on it so it's open up top and then it's the classic um, cage design so what people call like the big blue cage or whatever so it's got the big giant gaps like square gaps it's not like chain link fence or anything like that and so that drops down and sting as i said is repels down with it and so they're just fighting all of nwo on the inside taking them out and it's a huge giant fight or whatever well somehow the nwo members are starting to escape i don't know if there's a door or something and they get out or if because I don't notice uh, many of them climbing over the top, but they um, are on the outside, right outside the cage and stuff, and Piper and DDP are up, like, the side of the cage, and they're just pointing out to him, like, challenging and yelling at him and stuff like that, and so that's how Nitro ends. So I think Nitro, with that ending, that it made it pretty decent. The rest of the show was okay. None of the matches were really amazing, and st a lot of stuff just happened and went on, but nothing that was really good, so I definitely think Raw got has the upper hand for that week, um, but that's going to be it for the Monday Night Rewind podcast this week. Of course, we covered Raw number 220 and Nitro 110 from October 20th, 1997. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, be sure on any of the things, you can leave it a like on YouTube, a comment on YouTube, or on Apple Podcasts or iTunes or whatever, or SoundCloud. I don't, I don't know if you can leave comments there, but you may be. Um, but you can find the sh podcast on any of those. Like I said, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud are three places you can take it in. But do all those for me. And don't forget on the different things you can do, subscribe to the channels or whatever to be able to follow and catch up and never miss an episode when they drop on the weekend. But do all that for me. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.